What is good, YouTube? Quinn Way coming to y'all with another video. Oof, this is Otto Porter getting traded from Washington to Chicago. I mean, from yeah, from Washington to Chicago. Um, this is a trade that a lot of people didn't really see coming, and I even didn't see it coming until I actually read it, and I couldn't really believe it. Not because Otto Porter is the best player, it's just because. I'm a little shocked that the Chicago Bulls would try to lock in a guy, lock into a guy like Otto, who is on a long-term deal that's longer than Jabari. You could at least have Jabari be an aspiring, because Jabari is a guy that had a team option. So you could have just up oh, the bar. Jabari experiment didn't work, and when the free agency started, just declined the option, and then he'll be able to become a free agent, and you'll be able to get the cap space to give to someone else but instead they trade Jabari for a guy that plays better as a team player I feel um Otto Porter has had the potential of being a two-way player being able to guard multiple positions and being a mobile three that can also play some four because he is a good rebounder for his position and he he was a guy that coming into the league wasn't really known as he was a he was a jack of all trades. He was good at a lot of things, but not great. But you have a guy that have shot fifty percent from the field back to back seasons, and also forty percent from three back to back seasons above average. He shot forty three and forty four percent from three. Um, he's a guy that has mastered his role, which is playing off the ball and doing the little things that help your team win. And that's something that they really don't have in Chicago, so I can see why they will make a trade like this. You get a guy that can give um, Zach Levine some floor space and, and he can play multiple positions, and he's a sniper from three uh, when it comes to his regular career um, averages. And I like Otto Porter. I like when he got paid. I feel like he did get overpaid, but a guy that's shooting three at that, at that age and at that time when everybody was getting big deals and then you also had to factor in he's young and he at that time was improving every season you you do lock yourself into the belief that he can be a lot better and that's the unfortunate part he never really got too much better if anything he regressed this season after having two great seasons and he was the perfect role player to go along bradley bill and john wall for what they was trying to do with that team and those lineups but he never really became that top five superstar that you would hope that you would get at that pick. He did become better than what we we expected, especially as a shooter, being basically a sniper. But at the same time, he never really became an all-star caliber player. He has been really a glorified role player, a guy that mastered what he was asked to do, but never really did much else. And that's something that I really wanted to see out of Otto Porter is him trying to contribute in other ways, be more of a scorer. Can you create shots off the dribble? Can you literally um, score in isolation? And he really never did it consistently. He have some games where he give you 20, and he have majority of his games where he give you 15 to 17 points, and you will want more, especially when John Wall went out. You will want him to do a lot more considering that you lost an all-star caliber player, but he never could really do it. And I think that's unfortunate when you look at the Wizards really giving him that money and feeling like he can really be and grow into something special and he never really could get there um, outside of being a role player. So I understand why they gave up on him. They they gave him a lot of money. He has been one of the more overpaid players over the last couple of years. And he's a guy that has really got a lot of shots fired at him for being an overpaid role player. But I always liked him. I always liked his game, and I always liked what he brings to the table. But he just could never become more than what we thought he could be coming out of the draft. He he just became a solid role player. But I think that what Washington gets is Jabari. They can get a guy that can really create his own shot, um, get to the paint when he wants to sometimes, post up every once in a while. And they get a guy that they can literally say, well, we got rid of Otto Porter. Now we can get Jabari and we can just be the team that just lets him go. And then you get out of the Otto Porter contract that you really don't want anymore because, like I said, he never became the player you wanted. And you get to use that money on somebody else or just keep it until you figure out what you're going to do with John Wall and Bradley Bill. 
which they will have to figure out now that he has torn his Achilles and he already had heel surgery and it ended up getting affected. So that takes him off for the rest of the next two years because the season is basically over and he won't play this year anyway and he might not play at all next year. So you're going to have to figure out what direction you're going in, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to build and what coach you're going to go with because Scott Brooks have obviously never wanted to do rebuilds and I don't really see him really wanting to do a rebuild considering that they're going in that direction of trading Arthur Porter and having John Wall be damn near next to an enemy type of player that he you don't really know what he's going to be plus he didn't really play that well this year or last year and at the end of the day we, we was just an AFC last year anyway so I really want to know where they're going to go what direction they're going to go and how they're going to spend their money because this is a team that really hasn't been a free agent destination, really haven't been, a, a, haven't really drawn anybody to really come outside of role players. And then they get Dwight Howard back, who hasn't played damn near the whole season. So they give him a, just a team that had a little hype and had a little excitement. And then John Wall goes out, Arthur Porter gets traded in, Dwight Howard doesn't even play uh, 10 games. So this has been the complete opposite. This is a season that we thought that this could be the best Wizards team that John Wall has ever had to a team that can't even win 40 games, let alone 35. And now Bradley Bill is having a career season almost, and it's all going to a waste because they're not even in the playoffs. So I think that's unfortunate too. But Jabari Parker, it's sad for him because he went back to his hometown and he really wanted to win with them. He really was looking forward to playing with them. And he just couldn't mesh with the organization and the coach. They was going in the opposite of directions, and they feel like Jabari Parker wasn't giving his all. They feel like Jabari Parker could care less if he guarded somebody. He still gave you decent numbers, 47 from the field, 12 shot attempts, 70% from the free throw line, 6 rebounds, 2 assists, and 14 points, showing that he can still be a productive player in the right role, in the right system, giving the right minutes. And he still showed that he don't give a lick about defense. So, at the end of the day, I'm just going to touch on Bobby Portis, matter of fact, because that pick is so far away that I'm not even thinking about that right now. Plus, it could be a great pick depending on what happens to both of these teams and how they're winning and they're losing go. But Bobby Portis is a guy I'm a fan of. He has been a bully. He has really improved coming off his rookie year. He was a guy that was, you know, a lottery pick, um, getting picked. But, well, not a lot of people was outside the top 20, but he was a 22nd pick by Chicago. Um, 23, 6'11", 250, guy that can space out the floor, um, play power forward or center. He's a great rebounder when given the minutes. He only got a career high 25 minutes basically this season, and he gave you 14 points, 45 from the field, 37 from three, 78% from the free throw line, seven rebounds and one assist. He has always been a productive player since his first day game. He stepped in summer league with the Chicago Bulls, and he has been consistently doing that, given a marginal role, but he has actually expanded and played better in those roles. And he's a guy that plays hard. He wants to win, and he can impact the game on multiple different ways, whether it's setting screens, hitting wide open mid-range, spacing out the floor for three, crashing the boards offensively and defensively, or just being a pick-and-roll threat. Um, from lobs or even dump offs and also being a team player when it comes to playing on the court. But he has had some outside troubles, and he, he hasn't been the greatest teammate all off the court, but he's a guy that seems like he wants to win, and that's what really pushes him. Plus, they didn't really want to pay him. You already got Lori Markkinen. You already got Wendell Carter, and you only can pay so many players, and you only can have so many minutes available for them, and he was the odd man out. They gave him to a team that can use some good young talent, especially at that big position. And hopefully he can really get more minutes and even be probably become a starter, which will probably be a dream come true for him for that team. So I like all the players in this trade. It's not a player that I don't like. But at the, at the end of the day, I think this was a good thing for both teams. They get a guy that can be a, a good role player, and the team that they're trying to build, and he's a sniper from three, something that Jabari Parker isn't. Um, and on top of that, you get rid of Bobby Porter's contract because at the end of the day, you don't need him because you already have enough bigs, and you only can have and play so many of them and pay so many of them. So it made sense when it comes to that. 
Also, the Wizards can get out of Otto Porter contract because they feel like they made a mistake, and all they have to do is just uh, decline his player, his team option, and let him become a free agent. And then you can go about building, rebuilding your team. And like I said, it makes sense for both teams, and it makes sense for the players. So we'll see if Jabari Parker finishes finishes this season with Washington. Other than that. Queen away, basketball analysis signing out. Let me know what you guys think about this trade. Do you think it was good for both teams? Do you think some underrated somebody, un overrated somebody? Or do you think that, hey, both teams had to do what they had to do? And that's the predicament they was in, and this deal is fair. Um, I think that. Also, let me know if you guys think that, well, Bobby Portis can be an all-star caliber player. Can he really give them that inside that they need? at that power force center the position for the Wizards, as they had Yamahimi, Dwight Howard hasn't really panned out. They're going to need somebody that's big and got some type of skill, and Bobby Portis is the perfect guy for that, even though he's not the best teammate for what I see. But other than that, check out my website, AnnalysisPlayground.com. Link will be in the description in the comment section below. Check out my Facebook page, AnnalysisPlayground.com. Link will be in the description in the comment section below. Like on Facebook to show support. Thanks for people that like on Facebook. Also, check out my older videos. I do draft summer league nba preview nba breakdowns i also do tributes to the legends but i also talk about trades buyouts and even anything basketball i try to go 365 i try not to miss a day i love making these videos you guys i love watching that's